Welcome everyone to the skeleton for Anatomy and Physiology 1. Now, if you're just tuning in, um, we did have a previous lecture on osseous tissue, but at the end of it, it um, kind of started to get choppy, I noticed. Um, and so what we were talking about at, at the end of that, uh, towards the end of that video was the difference between epiphyseal plates and epiphyseal lines because the cartilage in our bone eventually, the hyaline cartilage eventually gets replaced by bone. When you're still growing in length, that's the, the, the way that's possible is because you still have an epiphyseal plate which is made out of cartilage, hyaline cartilage. And as those cartilage cells, cartilage cells turn into, uh, get replaced by osseous tissue, by bone, um, eventually the growing stops and what you have left is this remnant right here called an epiphyseal line. So on the, on the left hand side here, you have, this is hyaline cartilage, this is an epiphyseal plate, this is uh, this exists when you're five years old, ten years old, fifteen years old, sixteen, seventeen, and when you stop, when you have stopped growing in length, it's because there are no no more of these cartilaginous cells, and now it's all uh, all osteocytes right here, and the the what you have left over is called an epiphyseal line. That's the difference between epiphyseal plate and epiphyseal line. All right, so for today, for today's lecture, we'll take you through um, the difference between the cranial bones and the facial bones. Uh, we'll take you through um, the four curves of the spine as well as three abnormal curves. <clears throat> so, and we'll talk about what's the difference between primary curves, secondary curves, which ones are uh, already formed at birth and which ones form later on. Uh, we'll take you through um, everything you got to know between C1 and C2 in the spine in the cervical curve, atlas and axis. Uh, the advantages of fontanelles, the plates that are very still very mobile in babies, and um, <clears throat> and then how to tell the difference between a cervical vertebra a thoracic vertebra and a lumbar vertebra and finally um, how to be able to if you have if you're looking at a pelvic girdle um, how to tell a male from a female okay so let's delve right in now really what I'm gonna be expecting you to know is um, which ones which bones of the skull are facial bones, which bones of the skull are cranial bones. And the easy ones on the cranium are, you know, oh, you got the frontal bone, you got the parietal bone, you got the occipital bone, and you got the, the temporal bone. Those are pretty easy to remember because they're, they sort of make up the, the bulk of the, of the skull up on top. However, we do have two more cranial bones, and that's the sphenoid and the ethmoid. The sphenoid sort of looks like a, like a butterfly and um, you'll see it here in purple. Here it is here and over here. This is all the sphenoid. And <clears throat> here's another view of it. This is the sphenoid and, and uh, sort of looks like a butterfly here. You have the greater, the greater wings out here and you have the lesser wings um, you know, in here, um, and that's the sphenoid. So it's uh, you know from a, a superior view. This is this is what we're looking at, and uh, so that's so the sphenoid bone is part of is one of the cranial bones, and the ethmoid bone is more. It's it's almost like a more of a cube shape, and um, and it's found right in the center. You can see it here in green, and the, this is all the ethmoid here, <clears throat> and it contains um, the crystagalli and the cribriform plate and uh, and the perpendicular plate. This is what you see through the nasal cavity, the perpendicular plate, 
and it also contains the superior and, mis and middle nasal conchi. Um, which are, you know, somewhat hollow uh, bone, uh, allowing for, uh, with, with epithelia, line, lined with epithelia. And so when you breathe in, uh, they can uh, trap air, uh, warm the air, uh, moisten the air, um, as you, uh, the, the air that you breathe in. And, uh, and so those are, those are, here's the perpendicular plate. And here's the the middle concha here the 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 middle conchi here, the superior ones you can't see them from this view but they're here. These all belong to the ethmoid. You also have inferior nasal conchi, and that's just the name of the bone all by itself. <clears throat> so the so this is the inferior, the middle, and the superior nasal conchi actually belong to the ethmoid bone. Okay, conca for one and conchi for uh, for plural. <clears throat> and uh, and so the the facial bones. Well, the facial bones then are all the other bones of the skull that um, that are not cranial. So you got uh, you got nasal bones, you got lacrimal bones, palatine bones, zygomatic bone, the maxilla, the mandible the vomer, which is sort of attached to the perpendicular plate here, and, uh, and then also the, the inferior nasal conchi. Those are the facial bones. <clears throat> okay, the next thing <clears throat> is talking about the four spinal curves. And if we were to, you know, draw this out here, just like this, and we, t we can take some... Uh, you know, there's a, a backwards C. If I were to do this, and there's a another C here. You see it? There's a letter C here and a letter C here. And then divide it one more time over here. Here's another C and another C. See those four curves? So this is your cervical curve here. This is your cervical curve. And that's the neck. That's what makes up the neck. I am doing this with my right hand even though I'm left-handed. Serve. That's good enough. <laughs> the cervical curve. This is the thoracic curve. This is the lumbar curve. And this is the, the sacral curve. Now, <clears throat> next question is, well, what does your spine look like at birth? What does it look like at birth if you were facing this direction? And the answer is, well, you'd look, the spine looks like this. And so I see two of these curves already formed as a baby. And, and that's the, the thoracic and the sacral. This is the, this would be the concave side of the curve. Concave, like a cave, see the, like a person inside of a cave. Con, <clears throat> the concave side. And the, the other side, this side of that red line is called the convex side. Con, vex. It's, it's the kind of the, you know, the, the outside. Inside, imagine if there's a person standing inside here, inside of a cave, right? That's the concave side and the convex side. So the thoracic curve, you could say the thoracic curve is concave anteriorly. And it's also convex posteriorly. That's the thoracic curve. The lumbar curve would be the opposite. The lumbar curve is actually convex on the anterior side and concave on the posterior side. You see the difference? Um, 
Now, next question is, um, well, since the thoracic curve is has already is already formed at birth, and the sacral curve here it is, the sacral curve is also the same shape. These two are called primary curves. These are primary. Why? Because they are fo already formed at birth. And, <clears throat> um, and oops, I'm trying to write primary. Um, and uh, and don't forget that with the with the sacral curve, you actually have two different things going on. You have the sacrum, and you actually have the coccyx here. So both of those make up the the sacral curve. Well, that's supposed to be an M there, primary. Now, okay. Now, um, well, that means if that if that's only two of the four cervical curves, the four vertebral curves, that means that the that that automatically means that the cervical curve and the lumbar curve must be secondary. <clears throat> curves. <clears throat> and then the next question is, um, okay, well, if they form after birth, then what, um, at, at the question then it would be, at well, at what stage? How old is the person when they're formed? Or what does the person need to do to form them? And at what, and at what age? <clears throat> well, the answer is the cervical curve is formed when the baby, well, just look at the look at the curve. When the baby starts to lift up their head, that cervical curve starts to form. <clears throat> and when that happens, roughly is roughly at uh, six months. So let's put that in here. I'm still writing secondary on here. So roughly at six months, roughly at six months, um, the cervical curve begins to form, is formed or begins to form because the baby is actually starting to lift their head up. That's how it, that's how it gives it its shape. And <clears throat> the thoracic curve, well, that's at zero months because it's it's already it's already formed at birth the lumbar curve however let's see here the lumbar curve starts to form when the baby starts to stand up and walk that's roughly at 1 year so roughly at 1 year the lumbar curve begins to form you know, obviously, some ki some kids will start standing up a little a little earlier, a little later. We'll just call it twelve months. <clears throat> and the primary curve, once again, well, that's a primary curve. It's the by definition, it's already formed at birth. That's why it's called primary. <clears throat> so we'll call that zero months. And there, that's 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 basically all I'm gonna require for you to know about the four cervical, uh, the, sorry, the four um, vertebral curves. You have cervical, you have thoracic, you have lumbar, you have sacral, you have secondary curves, you have primary curves. Um, uh, what 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 forms them? What do you have to do to form them? And at at, at what age? And that's it. Now <clears throat> we also have um, we have three abnormal curvatures that can that can form. You have kyphosis, lordosis, and scoliosis. A kyphotic um, a, a, a kyphotic curve is is an exaggerated. Um, I'm going to try to exaggerate it a little bit more. 
it's an exaggerated um, thoracic curve. It's an, er uh, an exaggerated thoracic curve. <clears throat> well, does this happen like, <clears throat> like at birth or like, 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 like from due to old age or, or what? Well, actually it, it, it's often, um, uh, the result of, of aging. However, uh, kids can get it. Um, backpacks, um, you know, you, 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 carrying heavy things on your back, you can actually start to, um, if you're not careful, day after day after day after day, long hours carrying things on your back, you have to compensate for that weight to keep yourself balanced, keep yourself from falling forward, or and 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 therefore you're you gotta uh, um, have yourself in a position, a, a, a poor posture, and actually start to ha be, have a kyphotic uh, curve, and it also can be corrected. It can, all, for the most part, it can be, um, uh, you know, corrected by um, uh, proper treatment. You can um, begin to uh, decrease the angle of, of that kyphotic curve and, and bring you back to, back to uh, the, the right, uh, uh, you know, a, a proper, a proper uh, thoracic um, curve. Uh, so the 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 it's a so again it's a um, uh, exaggeration of the thoracic curve. <clears throat> this is actually very common. This is actually like in the U.S. There's something like three million uh, cases, you know, a year, um, or, or three million cases. Um, uh, um, uh, you know, that's. Um, uh, that 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 we find um, in the U.S. A lord a lordosis is not an exaggeration of the thoracic curve, but an exaggeration of and so I'm going to put an arrow here so you know which way this person is facing. These these two they're facing all. <clears throat> to the right. Okay, they're they're like this. Uh, this is an exaggeration. Lordosis is an exaggeration of the lumbar curve, and um, this is not as common. Um, a lot of times, it could just it could just simply be you know par partly genetic, uh, but uh, it's exaggeration of the of the. Uh, I, I don't think um, this is, you know, a, 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 a mom pregnant for, for nine months. Um, I don't think, uh, you know, um, that, that, would, that, would, that would occur and become permanent. Um, but I'm sure that could complicate things if a person already has, you know, is, is prone to lower doses. And uh, and and so anyway, it's an exaggeration of the of the, of the lumbar curve. Um, and finally, scoliosis is uh, this person is actually facing this person's is is facing forward. They're not facing left or right, and this is a lateral curve, lateral curvature of of the spine. The spine generally is, would be, you know, if the person was looking forward, would be, uh, it would be a straight line. This is lateral curvature. Some people um, may have it, scoliosis, some degree of scoliosis, and never even know. You could have athletes, uh, world-class athletes, that have scoliosis and it doesn't affect them at all. But it could be so exaggerated, the curve, um, that uh, it actually affects the person, and um, and that that can also be corrected through um, through through treatment to to, to some degree. <clears throat> so that's scoliosis. These two people um, are facing. These two are are facing to the right, but this person 
is facing forward or or backward. You, you could see obviously you could still see it. Okay, kyphosis, lordosis, and scoliosis. The next thing is uh, we're going to talk about the first two uh, uh, vertebrae of the of the spinal column, and that is your this is C1. And down here, this is C2. This up here is called atlas. And <clears throat> and, uh, and this one down here. So you can remember it at, um, because they're alph alphabetical order from top to bottom. And this one down here is is axis, atlas and axis. Now, these are not your typical looking vertebrae. Your typical looking vertebrae, they look like this. They got a body, this is the body. They have transverse um, processes. They have um, uh, spinous processes. However, um, however, uh, you notice here, like with axis, man, they're they're really. I mean, with the atlas, there really isn't a body at all, and the body of 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 the axis it has this this uh, this weird thing here, this big bump right here, and that's called the dens or the odontoid process. Well, <clears throat> all these things serve serve a purpose. Now imagine you have these superior articular facets up here. Imagine the skull now is resting on top of this thing. Um, when Atlas moves, it moves, it, it allows the head to rotate. So the articulation um, between the skull, between the skull and Atlas allows you to say no allows for that that rotation allows you to uh, shake your head no left to right however the articulation between C1 and C2 allows you to nod to say yes it allows for the flexion and extension of the head or of the neck so that's the difference between the, the articulation between the skull and C1 and then between C1 and C2. Imagine if uh, you were, um, you know, you're sitting in a car, you're sitting at a stoplight, and suddenly someone comes from, the, from behind you, doesn't see the red light, doesn't see you, and rams right into your back bumper. Full force. The head your head now will move uh, your 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 the car is going to push you forward and and uh, and your your head then is going to go you know going backwards good thing i mean good thing we have we have headrests <clears throat> to help with that but if we didn't have a headrest there it's very possible that your head's going to swing back. And if your head swings back, so will C1. And if C1 swings back, look what's, look what's going to happen. A lot of times, it'll snap your dens right off. The dens then gets squished, pushes right your, your, um, your spinal cord now is sitting right in here and it's, it goes right through here your spinal cord the spine sitting right through here and the dens will go in there and it'll impinge on the on the uh, on the spinal cord often paralyzing you uh, so that's the danger of the dens there getting broken off that's due to whiplash due to your head uh, being pushed backwards um, so that's, uh, that's everything I wanted to say about C1 and C2. We also got fontanelles. 
Um, when we're still embryos, we're, we're all, you know, cartilage, and then there are our chondrocytes, they get replaced with osteocytes. And, um, but, if, but, but uh, at birth, it, it, not everything is 100% formed. We still have these, these fontanelles, which are, it's a, it's, it, this stuff is, it's fibrous tissue, and the advantage is, it's because the, the bone is still growing. Now, at, at birth, the, the advantage is um, that uh, it allows for the ease of passage through the birth canal. Um, the, the, you know, the baby doesn't have all that much room through the, through the pelvic girdle, and the head is the largest thing, the most, the, the toughest thing. And so those fontanelles, they actually can squash and reshape the head, allowing the, 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 the head and the rest of the baby to, um, to pass through the, the, the birth canal. Another advantage to, uh, to having these fontanelles that, I mean, another, uh, something that you can take advantage of, is um, um, you can you, you can actually rest your thumb carefully rest your thumb on the baby's anterior font on your baby or you know whether you're a doctor or nurse um, P, uh, PA on on the anterior fontanelle and you can actually see if the baby is dehydrated or not you can sort of check its pulse um, using the and you can feel the um, uh, if it's sunken in or if it's you know at the same level as the rest of the of the of the skull. Um, that's an, that's another thing that you can do with the with that anterior fontanelle. These all close up all these fontanelles. So we have we have six of them. We have an anterolateral. We have two of those, or you can say sphenoidal. I usually say antero, like anterior lateral, anterolateral. So we got two. We have posterolateral. We got two of those because you have one on this side, one on the other side. And then we have a, uh, a posterior fontanelle, and then we have this big, large one, um, anterior fontanelle. So we actually have six. This one actually, this one actually, um, oftentimes will stay open up to eighteen to, to twenty four months, even up to like two years. Usually, it's more like a, a year, year and a half. But um, uh, anyway, uh, and so um, that's 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 uh, uh, so that's to your that's that's to your advantage. Um, you know, being a, a, a parent or a caretaker. Okay, so those are the uh, the fontanelles of the of the of the baby skull. The next thing is how do we tell the difference? What are the features? the The main features of all vertebrae are well, you got a body. You have um, uh, uh, you get the spinal. Um, uh, uh, a process, spinous process. You have the transverse process. You have the uh, this this little area here. These are the the, the pedicles. They sort of keep the um, um, this area attached to the body. You have lamina here and here. And and these are all pretty typical in in uh, all three different types. Of uh, a vertebrae. However, in cervical vertebrae, how you can tell the cervical vertebrae from 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 others? Well, one, the spinous process is oftentimes most of them you'll see they're um, they're they're forked. A bifid, we call it a bi like a bifurcation, uh, bifid spinous process. Also, these are the only ones, the cervical vertebrae are the only ones with transverse foramen. We got two holes in here for the blood to pass through. 
Um, no other vertebrae have that, you see? Um, and then an, another pretty, um, another pretty uh, obvious one when you're comparing them with your hands, when you, when you have them in your hands, they're really, t they're, they're fairly small. The bodies are small. And in general, they're all pretty. They're all pretty small. If we we see here, um, here's uh, here's the cervical here. Here's the thoracic. Here's the lumbar. And uh, these. This is actually zoomed in compared to this one. So this should actually even be smaller. The next ones are your uh, are your thoracic. <clears throat> your thoracic vertebrae, um, the bodies are a little bit larger, and however, the spinous process, they're, they, they point, they have a pretty steep angle. And so when you look at, when you look at them put together from the side, you can see, see the spinous process, they're like kind of like pointing down down, 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 where where your cervical they're almost like parallel with the ground, just like these are parallel with the ground pretty much. Um, so you can that's that's another way you can tell. And um, it also kind of looks like it would look like a giraffe head, you know, like Melman. You got like the ears and the little, you know, oops, be the head. Kind of looks like a looks like a looks like a giraffe. <clears throat> so that's the um now these also another thing with uh with the thoracic vertebrae is they have costal facets costal meaning ribs uh, because these are the only ones that attach to ribs t1 to t12 these are attached to your 12 ribs and uh, and so you have these, I'm sorry, <clears throat> these transverse costal facets. You have inferior costal facets and superior costal facets right on the body here. Um, uh, uh, three spots actually that one rib will actually uh, be articulating with. And if, then, of course, you have the other side, the other rib as well. And finally, you have the biggest, meatiest ones. Those are your lumbar. The bodies are by far the largest of the three. Massive bodies. The, the spinous process are... They're short and stocky and, and sort of uh, square-like, if you notice. They're like square kind of like and um, they're not very long like you see the thoracic are much 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 longer short and stubby and um, and then the bodies are are the largest which makes sense because these vertebrae have to support themselves as well as all of the thoracic as well as all of the cervical as well as the head so they have to have the largest bodies the most surface area make sense down towards the bottom. And so when you compare the sizes of the bodies, the sizes in general, you can see, oh yeah, these guys are relative to these are so much smaller. And those thoracic relative to the body of the um, lumbar are so much, are so much smaller. <clears throat> And the last thing we're going to do is talk about um, how to tell a male pelvis from a female pelvis. Well, the male pelvis, the easiest way is just to look at the, the, uh, the pubic arch. This is the pubic arch. And if the pubic arch has an angle that is obtuse or more than 90 degrees, then it's a female. However, look at this one. The pubic arch on this one on the right here is acute. It's less than 90. That would make this guy a male.
So this would be a male and this is a female. This is, that's, that's, that's one way of doing it. From the side, you can, uh, you know, you can fit, if you can fit three fingers from the side, uh, then that means that you can do that because the sacrum here is pushed backwards to allow for babies to fit through. However, with a male, uh, you can only fit a couple of fingers, and that's because the sacrum is pushed forward anteriorly versus backwards posteriorly. And uh, so that's, the, that's another way you can tell. Really, really the easiest way uh, is just anterior view, pubic arch, obtuse, or, or acute, that would be male, obtuse angle, that would be female. <coughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's review here. Uh, let me just ask you, let me just ask you five questions and see if you can, see if you can get them. Um, looking at the, the curves of the spine, all right, first question is how many curves are there? How many curves of the spine are there? There are four curves. <clears throat> Which one's the first curve? Cervical curve. Another question I can ask is what, uh, I guess I could ask way more than five, five questions. Is the cervical curve primary or secondary? Answer, see here, it's secondary because it forms after birth. Another question I ask is, what, uh, what age? Six months. By what, by what mechanism? How does it form? It's by when the baby begins to lift up their head, look up, see the world, six months, then their cervical curve starts to form. <clears throat> There's four or five questions, all, all, all just talking about the cervical curve. You can do the same thing with the thoracic. Ask the same questions with the lumbar, with the sacral curve. Primary or secondary? At what age? That kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. What was the first thing that we talked about? The facial versus cranial curves. Is the sphenoid bone, is the sphenoid bone cranial or facial? <clears throat> it's a cranial bone. <clears throat> we normally think of the cranial bones being, oh yeah, that's your, uh, that's your frontal bone, your parietal bone, your occipital bone, your temporal bone, but you have two more that are sort of hidden, and that's your sphenoid, and that's also the, the ethmoid bone. <clears throat> All the rest in the, in, the, in the skull would be facial bones. Your nasal bones, your lacrimal bones, um, the vomer, the maxilla, the, the, the mandible, the zygomatic, those are all <clears throat> facial bones. Um, let's see here. What's an advantage to having fontanelles? What's the advantage? <coughs> advantages? Um, advantages? Uh, um easy passage to the birth canal. Also, you can use that anterior fontanelle to uh, check, um, check for uh, if the baby's dehydrated or not. See here, <clears throat> what does the cervical, what does a cervical vertebra have that uh, thoracic and lumbar don't have? What, what, what does it have? Well, it has small body, transverse foramina, bifid spinous process. Those are three, just to name a few. <clears throat> and um, what does, uh, which one, which of these two, uh, verte which of these two vertebrae, atlas and axis, I'm trying to find it here, where did it go? <clears throat> which of the two vertebrae uh, is 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 the one on is the superior one? Which one is um, the one with the dens? Which one which articulation allows you to say yes? 
You remember? <clears throat> that is uh, the articulation between C1 and C2. Between which two, um, uh, which articulation allows it, between which two bones allow you to say, uh, to, to say no? And that would be um, between the skull and the uh, and, and C1. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. Thank you very much uh, for your attention and um, study up and uh, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.